It's a sacred grove I covered quite a few times. Now I'm walking along its borders. <laughs> now a lot of trees have started flowering and then uh, whenever I I get a good specimen where the flowers are low enough then I do my videos of them. This is a tree that's called uh, Bogi in our local Kannada and Tulnad. One of the very fine hardwoods with uh, small leaves, very pretty leaves and flowers are started but they are high up. Today I am going through another uh, doomed location where uh, probably within 10 years it's going to get uh, become the city and city has en engulfed this place and uh, usually before these cities get uh, these cities digest off uh, these remnant patches and surrounding farmlands and uh, they get incorporated into the town or cleared for uh, some cultivation and such things for a few years it gets they remove the first they remove the tall trees big trees like this this is that artocarpus uh, one of that jackfruit tree species so this type of trees and all they will cut and sell first then they let it be for a few years and then that next stage happens once they stop farming they clear the tree old trees on the side and all that if it is a kind of virgin area they clear, clear everything and start the whatever the crop and in urban spaces, as the land gets very valuable and labor shortage and all happens, these uh, farms get abandoned some part. And then uh, in that period, some smaller items and all will survive. So this is one such place. This is actually old farmland, some, people, some farmers are there. Amas means they've all now become richer because their land value has become so much. And then uh, this is one of those neglected places. So we are going to enter one such place which is quite well canopied. So from the look of it, it could be some sacred thing also. But I don't see any actual uh, those uh, that murti, that uh, snake god's uh, image and all. And, uh, the, and also in this uh, in our uh, Tropical countries like India and all, the spring comes from uh, according to the Indian uh, season of way of looking at the seasons, we have six seasons, not four like Europe and all. And uh, this February, March, around Shivaratri, that's our spring. So this time is this period is very nice in the forests and forested areas because the this potos is a, it's a tremendous plant. I think it's lost the grip on the tree on which it was growing and it's hanging downwards. 
once the plant becomes mature it gets this type of leaf formation it gets a double shape and then it has red fruits also which these uh, birds like and it's a good uh, garden plant and uh, very versatile it can climb on to walls trees Here, this tree has been, uh, I think, cut a bit, so it has come to the top and then it is hanging downwards in a very nice way. And on that tree, it's climbing up. So anyway, coming back to today's topic. So the in the spring season, what is now going on here? Many of the deciduous tree species and all they drop their leaves and then the new shoots start coming up because we will be approaching a very hot dry summer also. And also a lot of uh, trees and shrubs start flowering. They wait for the monsoon to completely end and then they do their flowering. And uh, this understory where there is some shade and uh, some some uh, kind of a scattered sunlight penetrates. This is one such place. A lot of trees are there. Not very old trees or anything, but still decent sized trees. And uh, some speckled sunlight comes. And in this kind of location, many members of this coffee family are living. The coffee family is quite big. They have certain uh, common features like uh, the shape of the leaves and all that. Many of these western cut trees, they have tall ones, they have this buttress that to support that height. Great height what they go. This tree, for example, must be some 50, 60 feet already. If it gets sufficient time, it will grow up to 100, 100 feet, 30, 40 meters and all. So, in this uh, shaded areas, these uh, coffee plant uh, family members, quite a few are living. And then that entire uh, group of plants called uh, Ixoras, are, they belong to that coffee family. Then, uh, they are one branch of that coffee family. Then there is another group called Psychoteria, that has all this... Uh, kind of powerful chemicals and all that. Just like coffee, coffee also has many chemicals in it. Some thousand chemicals are there it seems. Alkaloids and all kind of things. That's what makes coffee uh, such a powerful medicine also. Then uh, in this kind of location, these uh, some of the members of the Ixora family are also there, very nice ones. And our Western Ghats has its own uh, few endemic uh, Ixoras that are found nowhere else in the world but in India, in the Western Ghats. And uh, this Ixora brachiata, what I am going to show now, that is one of those endemic Species. So this Ixora brachiata, it's uh, endemic uh, to Western Ghats. It's found in that uh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Kerala, and in uh, properly in well shaded uh, moist evergreen forest locations.
then uh, it is uh, ixora brachiata coffee family it's a small tropical tree it grows up to some 10 feet uh, 10 meters that is 20 to 30 feet and uh, in this season it flowers profusely This uh, Ixora brachiata is a common name is Western Ghats uh, Ixora. So, because it's endemic of this region and then uh, I, I never seen this in any of the garden and all. It has not got into garden uh, trade. It's not probably sh not showy enough for them. And then, uh, in all probability, from the look of it, I don't think it will survive in other zones. You have to use plant it in this, in its natural zone only. And uh, the way this, uh, we are losing our forest cover and all. I think in its natural locations it will be it will be severely endangered because those places where this kind of evergreen uh, forests are there quite intact and not been cleared such places have become very rare and uh, the only hope for these species is uh, if they get taken into gardens that's the reason I started covering all these uh, plants which uh, need shelter in our gardens. Unless we take the trouble to acquire them and grow them, in a generation to two, it, you will never find these. They are on the verge of disappearing. So... These are the, for the advanced gardeners who are tired of these exotic and meaningless gardening. They have to take up this challenge. To learn how to grow these uh, native species, endemic species and then to acquire them somehow since they are not available in uh, nurseries. Even if you like a plant and you are ready, you will not get the Specimens which can be which you can put it into your garden, and some of them are quite fussy. Also, ah, this is how it looks the leaves, leaves are very pretty, they come in uh, pairs like this two, 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 and a simple shape is there, and the color also is very attractive. Fresh leaves are that light green. Later they become a bit darker and uh, smooth. In the exposed sun this won't survive. We have to provide. They like partial shade. Say a few hours of shade at least. And then uh, it should be moist. Otherwise the flowers and all will get compromised. And now we'll have a look at the close-up of the flowers. Mm. They're very attractive but uh, tiny. And very fragrant. The whole area is filled with their aroma. A fresh young... Uh, They are a bit high up for me to cover nicely. I can have to climb a little bit onto the tree.
focusing on these tiny things is quite a task. Yeah. Oh, it's very tiny. You can see in the in my Facebook page. Uh, good uh, photos. Oh, now it's clear. So the flowers have a kind of a green kind of a. The main flower is white. Then uh, that's how it looks. It's very attractive. That uh, there's a petals are kind of light green almost. Petal or the inner part of the flower. Then it has small red uh, berries. It seems which birds are eating. It's a really beautiful thing. Only thing is you have to go close up and uh, see them. That whole shape and all. And also the the tiny. That's what makes them all uh, hard to appreciate. But the beautiful aroma. And then uh, that reddish uh, tender buds. And. Uh, small and perfect shape all that makes it very attractive and uh, like if it is well watered and all in a garden i'm sure the flowers will be profuse this place is a is a quite a good location since uh, on three directions uh, there is a full canopy it has flowered well and earlier when i saw in a little more hostile uh, location the flowers are less and more droopy and all so in a, in this west coast western ghats region and moist places and all with little care i think it will survive and uh, look at it closely they really is marvelously beautiful so that's how it looks i try to show the bar also that's some more quirky type of bark what's the bark It's a small tree. Yeah, that's how the bark looks. And this one could be quite an old tree. Seeing the girth and all, it may be twenty, thirty years old and all. And uh, it is growing along with uh, attached almost to another tree, but doing quite well. So this uh, people say good, you shouldn't plant them close and all that. I don't think it's a applies in nature. They are able to adjust nicely. So. This is the Western Ghats Ixora, one of the rare varieties, and uh, I doubt if other people have made videos of this species in the YouTube. So it's a rare opportunity for people to have a look at this. That's how the tender. Uh, but it look very beautiful and as i mentioned earlier the leaves also are very attractive beautiful leaves
Rose. That is today's long and probably very boring video for most people.